Welcome to VDRUM Tips. In this video we are going to show you how to build a low budget dual trigger system with basic materials and without soldering or using a drill. The inner diameter of this 12 inch shell needs to be measured. The screws itself take away 5 mm on each side. We use a wooden bar. Mark it and cut it with this low budget saw, which is actually a metal saw, but works just fine for wood too. A treatment with sanding paper is required for the edges and a smooth look. The two subtend lock screws get removed to apply two metal angles. We need two longer M4 screws including washers to apply them to the locks, as they are pretty thick. Screws for wood will be used to attach the wooden bar to the angles. This time we use a trigger cone from 682 drums, head and rim piezo from R drums, some adhesive dots to apply them, a socket terminal for three cables and a part of a cable that has a female stereo jack plug applied. Another important component is this old foam mouse pad or any other hard foam material. These metal angles have slotted holes, which is necessary to set the height of the trigger bar. We apply the angles to mark the spots for the screws on the wooden bar. You should draw a centered line before marking them. The screw can be turned into the wood without drilling. We do this now to make it easier to mount the bar later on. As angles and lock screws take too much space, we need to shorten the wood bar again. The cone has to be exactly in the middle within these two lines. Our mouse pad will be marked and cut into a stripe and then into little squares as big as the width of the wood bar. These little squares will be used as decoupler to desolate the head from the rim trigger. We just glue them together. The decoupler can be attached via glue or adhesive tape. The squares are perfect to adjust the height, besides using the angles with slotted holes. Actually, it would make more sense to apply the angles first. You can basically use any kind of metal angle, as long as it has a slotted hole. This adhesive dot is necessary to get a good trigger result, which is only possible with an overtopping piezo. The second dot is for the rim piezo. The rim piezo has to be placed as close to the center as possible. Our drums marks their head piezos as negative and positive signal can be exchanged during the producing process in the factory. The ground signal is coming from the red cable in this case. The cable gets marked again and shortened. We use small cable heads to make it easier to mount them to the socket terminal. It has holes that can be used to screw it onto the wood bar. A stereo jack plug has three zones, sleeve, ring and tip. The cables get applied in a specific way typical for Roland pads. You can download the wiring diagram on vtramtips.com. Adhesive tape can help to prevent the cable from slacking around. Now we need to desolate the cable ends of the jack cable. Cut carefully into the isolation with a knife and remove the outer layer. Do the same with the inner cables. The not isolated inner cable is always the ground cable, which has to be connected to the sleeve contact. The red cable is the tip cable. It should not be a problem if you accidentally exchange the red and the white cable. It will only mess up the head and rim signal. We use a cable clip to prevent the cable from getting ripped off. Two cable ties will hold the jack block in place. Don't forget the branding. We cut a gap for the cable into the cone and apply a double layered adhesive dot. The cable clip can prohibit the access to the lock screw. It is really important that the trigger cone overtops the bearing edge at 1.5 mm. A ruler will help to adjust it properly. We apply the piece of sticky tape at the correct height. To achieve the correct height of the cone, it can be necessary to use less or more rubber squares or mount the angles in a different way. You should try this out before assembling the system. The lock screws get tightened as soon as the trigger cone is adjusted. 
the pet receives a Drumtech Series 2 ply mesh head. We use the pet as snare drum in this case. The rim gets triggered by hitting the head, which means we have to change the settings. We need to decrease the rim shot adjustment number to make sure the rim does not get triggered by hitting the head. A standard Roland PD125 head rim adjustment is around 2. If the decoupler is too hard, like in this case, the number has to be decreased. If it is too soft, it has to be increased. Our drums decouplers are perfect and adapts the Roland rim adjustment standard, which is really good for module with less adjustment options. The pad trigger is quite good. But compared to the other pads we made in previous videos, this pad cannot deliver the same result, which is mostly related to the DIY decoupler. Although this pad is still good enough for beginners and low budget projects, and it is easy to make. Thanks for watching VTRUM Tips. If you want to see a video about air vent cables, click the left box. Click the one in the middle to see how to make a high-end trigger system. Or click the right box to check out the flex trigger system.